Good afternoon. My name is Wendy Madison, and on behalf of First Congregational Church, the Sanctuary Choir, Nancy Allen, and our family, I would like to welcome you as we celebrate inspirations through poetry and music from both of those of us who are in the midst of our community and those who circle back to be with us, to share their musical tellings. My late husband, Mark, he was so grateful for the musical and theatrical opportunities afforded to him during his lifetime here in this community. So this afternoon, it's a thank you note. It's a thank you note to those who have and continue to nurture us, to inspire us through music and through the arts. And so this afternoon, there are going to be a few little stories here. And I'm going to begin with one about this gentleman right over here, Dave Mark, whose fingers just left the keyboard. Dave Mark, he's a born and raised fellow here in La Crosse. He took off 40 years ago to New York City. His passion was to study jazz, jazz piano. But in recent years, he keeps coming back. And in conversations that I've been having with him over the last, actually, five or six months, I've learned that this is a part of his legacy. And it started way back with his grandfather, Dave, who in the 1920s and 30s, he was trying to find ways to make money, but also ways to bring the community together. And he did this by creating outdoor movies. And he moved here to La Crosse, and he loaded up his car or whatever vehicle he had with video equipment, and he took off to different communities in our region. He was in Coon Valley, Bangor, Norwalk, Viroqua, summer evenings, inviting people to step out of their homes or to drive their cars in from their farms and to spend some time together in their communities watching outdoor movies and escaping the reality of those tough times. Well, Dave's family legacy continues, bringing people together. And each summer, Dave Mark has been stepping back to La Crosse. He's been moving away from the sweltering heat of New York City and circling back home to enrich us with his music. He is providing free live concerts. Why? Because his parents, Bob and Jean Mark, created a fund to allow this to happen. They valued bringing people together. And so we're going to have another song from Dave. I understand it was inspired by him when he was in his New York studio apartment. And this song is dedicated to Mark. It's called Mark's Mark, but I call it Mark's Mark's Mark. And so here we go, another song from Dave Mark.
Thank you, Dave, for that beautiful, beautiful song. We have a history of music that flows along the banks of the Mississippi River. And our riverside continues to bring just an array of styles of music, rhythms, and flavors with lacrosse jazz, orchestra, concert bands, moon tunes. I mean, it is alive in our city. And Paul Erickson and Nancy Allen have been a part of those traditions for decades. Paul Erickson played with Al Townsend's Wonderful World of Jazz Band for years, and both Paul and Nancy joined uh, the Sh Wilma Schaffner Rivertown Review at the Pump House for over 25 years. So we're going to bring you a little taste of Rivertown lacrosse. I gotta lay down my troubles Down by that riverside By that riverside Down by that riverside I'm gonna lay down my troubles Down by that riverside Down by that riverside Ain't gonna study war no more 
Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study, study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study, study war no more Well, thank you, Polly and Nancy. Polly always brought the house down in the uh, Rivertown reviews, and you know, what can I say? Fabulous. We now are going to be moving into um, uh, being able to enjoy people who love to sing. And we love to sing. And we're going to begin with a poem by Walt Whitman.
our community holds a rich tradition of choral music, and today we are most grateful for the presence of renowned composer and conductor Rene Clausen, whose choral compositions have been enjoyed by so many singers and directors within our choral community. So here's another story. I met Renee in 1973. It was a time when young men wore these brightly colored plaid pants. I mean, they were greens, tans, browns, reds, and Renee had a pair. Well, Mark and I had driven down from the cities to attend my cousin Frankie Dimmick's senior vocal recital at St. Olaf College. And while we were celebrating in the dining room of their home on Forest Avenue, my cousin Frankie came by. She came to Mark and to me, and she leaned in. And in a hushed voice, she said, I want you to meet my boyfriend. She said, now, I want you to know this first. He has a name that is French. It's Rene, because of course we came from families where there were Johns and Davids and Dans. And so she said, his name is Rene. He's a little shy, but he is so excellent with everything that he does in music. And, and she said, I am not telling you this because he is, he is my boyfriend. I am telling you this because this is what all the St. Olaf professors of music say. <laughs> and here we are today. Rene went on to get his doctorate, uh, it became you know, Dr. Rene Clausen, professor of music and conductor of the Concordia Choir in at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. And I, I could list a series of awards and accomplishments. But instead, I want to share with you today some words that came from a Concordia alum. Her name is Laura Laguerre. And this is what she had to say about her experience singing with him at Concordia College. Whenever I sang with him, I felt as though he was touching my soul, sharing the music in there and that the sound taking shape was the fruit of a continuous partnership between himself, the choir as a whole, and each individual within it. And when that continuous flow of communication is established, as he calls it, it is the circle of communication. Sheer beauty is made, the kind that moves hearts and souls. And Renee Clausen has moved many hearts and souls through his work. Each choral work comes with its own story. And Dr. Clausen composed our next song, Set Me as a Seal, very soon after the tragic death of Frankie and Renee's boy child in utero. And so this song has, been a, has become a song of healing it speaks to love overflowing that boundary between life and death. And it has become one of Renee's most performed works. We are now going to be asking our very own Nancy Allen to come forward, one who is most loved by all of us who have had the opportunity to work with her. And she will be leading the Sanctuary Choir of the Congregational Church in the song, Set Me as a Seal.
Today, we are grateful for the opportunity to premiere the choral work, Stars, composed by Renee Clausen in memory of Mark Madison. This choral work was inspired by Mark's fascination with the night sky. You know, he would sit on the tractor on cold winter nights on his boyhood farm, contemplating that star world that would beckon him to step into the beyond. But this fascination was magnified when he had the opportunity to sing in the Minnesota All-State Choir in Bemidji, Minnesota in 1969. And along with my cousin Frankie, they were both seniors in, in high school at that time. <clears throat> the choir was introduced to Robert Frost's poem, Choose Something Like a Star through Randall Thompson's choral work, Frostiana. And this, this musical experience, it left a profound imprint on him throughout his life. It would come up in conversations about how this um, took him into a, a, a spiritual world, a conversation about uh, what it is that we know and what is that we don't know. What is that battle like? After Mark's death, I found a bundle of papers tucked away in a closet. And it was a stack of his old English papers he had written while attending Augsburg College. They were typed on that onion paper that we used to use. And there were these eraser smudges on it. And then there were these blotches of red ink that the professor had made remarks about what he needed to correct, which was always grammar. <laughs> well, one of those papers reflected this 19-year-old man's thoughts about this poem and about this experience. And I want to read a few uh, of, of those paragraphs. He said, Robert Frost, in Choose Something Like a Star, was not oblivious to the mystery of existence, the unexplainable, undefined power watching all without pause or change or intervention. Frost recognizing, recognizes a craving in mankind, the plea for a clear revelation of and deliverance from despair by a deity reduced to man's limited understanding reasoning, and temporal concerns. The power, mindful yet unshifting, exists to give man something to cling to in his modern chaos, to give meaning and order to existence, which would otherwise seem absurd and without purpose. Frost's meticulous choice of words with the imagery and personification they reveal along with Randall Thompson's musical setting to the poem, heightens the revelation of Frost's message. Ever since my first encounter with this poem, I have held it as one of my favorite readings, singing and finally understanding. The carefully chosen words, which often confused me before, now create a clear, and fuller realization of a higher steadfast solace existing for mankind. And now I'm going to call my friend, Mark's friend, our friend, Joe Anderson, to read the poem, Choose Something Like a Star. O oh star, the fairest one in sight, we grant your loftiness the right to some obscurity of cloud. It will not do to say of night, since dark is what brings out your light. Some mystery becomes the proud. But to be wholly taciturn in your reserved is not allowed. Say something to us we can learn by heart, and when alone, repeat. Say something. 
and it says, I burn. But say with what degree of heat, talk Fahrenheit, talk centigrade, use language we can comprehend, tell us what elements you blend. It gives us strangely little aid, but does tell something in the end. And steadfast as Keats' Eremite, not even stooping from its sphere, it asks little of us here. It asks of us a certain height. So when at times the mob is swayed to carry praise or blame too far, we may choose something like a star to stay our minds on and be stayed. So it was through this poem, heightened through the choral music of, of Randall Thompson, that really was the springboard for the composition stars. Renee introduced me to the poet Sarah Teasdale, who wrote the poem in 1926. And it's through her lush words we are moved into the splendor of the night. It is my honor, it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce you to Dr. Renee Clausen, who is going to be sharing a few words about this new composition. Thank you so much. First words I wish to say are my profound thanks to Wendy and her family for giving me this opportunity to write a piece about Mark and about who he was. Hopefully when you hear the music, it will remind you of him. Although I didn't feel I knew Mark really well, after spending some time with Wendy and reading some of his writings, I felt I got to know the essence and spirit of the man. Mark was a gentle, kind man who was captivated by wonder, the mystery of the vastness of the universe, and the celestial sky. He felt something vibrant and eternal in his connection to the cosmos. He also had a great bass voice and loved to sing. So I'm going to tell you right now, when you listen for a few lines where the basses stick out, that was for Mark. <laughs> So it's uh, all of these qualities of the man that led me to the Sarah Teasdale poem, Stars. I hope you've had a chance to read through the poem. It is full of wonderful imagery. As the composer of the piece, I'd like to point out just a few things to listen for as you hear the piece. The very first word in the poem is alone. So when you hear the piano introduction, the first several bars are just one melody, one note at a time, as if you begin alone. So there's really quite, and then it moves into some um, harmony in the piano, but I wanted to stress right at the beginning that this begins alone on the hill in the dark sky, or on a dark hill. And uh, the next, uh, and a heaven full of stars. I love those words, and I love the connection of those words. And a heaven full of stars. What you'll hear right there when you listen to this is the change of harmony. I actually shift for just a minute or two to a different key center, and I'm sure it made the singers really mad to have to encounter that. <laughs> when all of a sudden, and uh, you know, a heaven full, we come to a B-flat major chord that has nothing to do with what came before it. <laughs> but when you hear these wonderful singers sing it, they sing it absolutely beautifully. And I hope you'll find that moment that the heaven full of stars is indeed the musical representation of what I'm sure Mark felt many times. There's another phrase I'd like you to be aware of, up the dome of heaven. 
where the voices enter one another, one after each other, as if they're climbing stairs to a heavenly realm. Uh, one, more, um, one or two more little things to listen for. There is um, a time where the word marching comes in. And especially if you listen to the piano, when you hear the word marching, you're going to hear thump, 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 as if there's a little gentle march in the background. Um, and then finally, so the last two lines of the poem, which I'd like to repeat to you, and I know that I am honored to be witness of so much majesty. I can just see Mark on the hill being witness to so much majesty. And so the piece ends with quiet repetition several times of a very calm C major chord. And that's how I imagine right now Mark is. He's resting in the eternal arms of a C major chord <laughs> in which he alone sings the low C. <laughs> And so at this point in time, I would like to welcome Michael Esser. And I just want to say a couple of things because Michael Esser is a beloved vocal teacher and choir director. We have people coming back to sing in this choir who sang in his choir in high school and they came to be able to experience working with him again. And as I was saying, the in, in my mind as I was really reading the poem, Choose Something Like a Star, I thought, well, that's Mike Esser, oh, star. Help me understand what this means. You know, help me uh, understand the questions that I have about this. And he has uh, brought to the community of singers warmth and a just a feeling of joy as they are coming together to give voice to this work. Mike Esser, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for your presence here with us today. It is simply inspiring to be here in the same room and to share the histories of our lives through the arts, to come back and to reconnect, and to really glorify these moments that we've had here on Earth together through songs that are as beautiful and as moving as this. We welcome you to a reception afterwards. So after we hear from Dave Mark one more time, please join us in the community room for a little food and fun.